How do I get rid of these rings on the top of my print? I get asked this question all of the time. I'm going to show you how to take your prints from this to this using Orca Slicer's variable layer height. The process is the same in Bamboo Studio and Prusa Slicer. If you're using Cura, you're in luck. I did a video on that a little while ago showing how to use the adaptive layer heights to get rid of those rings and steps. I'll post a link to it down in the description. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is more than printed circuit boards and assemblies. They also do CNC machining. Just drag and drop your model to their website, select your preferred dimensional units, material type, and finish requirements, along with any special needs you might have. Add more parts if you need, or just click submit and get a lightning fast quote. While you're on their website, be sure to check out the shared projects page from other makers just like you and me. The rings and steps are easy to get rid of and can make all the difference between a good print and a great print. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. I have Orca Slicer fired up, so let's just get started. Okay, so I have this chest piece loaded up. The first thing I wanted to look at is my layer heights. And I'm going to do that by coming up and clicking on the machine settings. And we'll go to extruder. And we see that our layer height limits are 0 0.08 for the minimum and 0 0.32 for the maximum. Normally the maximum I like to keep at 0.28, but I'm going to leave it where it's at for this video. We'll close that out, and I'm going to go ahead and we'll slice this up and see what we get time-wise. Okay, we're looking at an hour and 24 minutes. Let's go ahead and print this and see our results. So we have our finished chest piece, and you can see a lot of the rings and steps up on the top here, and also down in this Okay, so we saw results on our first print. So let's go try to clean this model up a little bit. Let's click on the model, and we're going to come up here to our toolbar at the top, and we're going to click the one with all the little lines on it. That's your variable layer height. Give that a click, and the first thing we notice is this nice little dialog box. Taking a look at the adaptive button, we got quality and speed. Now, the the closer we move this slider to the quality side, the better our print will look. The more we move it to the speed side, the faster it's going to print. Now we're going to start with 0.5. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the adaptive button. And you'll notice that our model colors have changed. We got a lot of red, some green, some white, and a little bit of orange banding in here. Now, on the right side of the screen, you'll also notice the same colors. As I move my mouse up and down to that color bar, you'll see a yellow line moving with it on the model. That tells us what the layer height will be at that part of the model. So when I'm in the red, I'm looking at 0.32 for our layer height, which is our maximum layer height. In the green, we're looking at 0.128. 0.17 as there's a 0.19 as we come up closer to the top which is near the tip of the model we're going to probably see a 0.08 there's a 0.08 probably right at the top of the model um, the white areas kind of give us an area something in between like there's some 0.21s so if I slice this now we're probably going to have a faster print than we did before we applied any detail to it and we cut it down by quite a bit there, an hour and five minutes. But the reason for that is because a lot of these layers that were 0.2 are now 0.32. But it's just these small areas of green that are going to the more defined layer height. Now, once you have your layer height determined on what you want, you can go ahead and smooth it out so that it's a smoother transition between the 0.32s to the 0.08s. And you do that by clicking the smooth button. And you can click that as many times as you want. You see I got a lot more white in this area. 
which means when I'm going from the point one eights and I'm hitting the whites, I'm going back into the point twos, and then I'm getting back up close to the point threes. But you can click that as many times as you want. As you can see, the more I click it, especially in this midsection here, you get a lot more orange. And in the orange area, we're hitting 0 0.27, 0 0.28, a lot of 0.28s. I'm going to go ahead and reset that. I'm going to hit my adaptive button. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to 0.3. And we'll see how we do. 0.29, close enough. Let's hit the adaptive button. And it looks a lot better than it did before. We're seeing more green. Um, we can smooth that out again by clicking as many times as you want. But I think you're going to see a pretty rough transition from here in the red right to that orange. And you can find that out by seeing what you got there. We're going from 0.32. Yeah, that's, no, that's not too bad. Going from 0.32 to... 0.30. Let's reset this again. I'm going to put my adapt back on. Now I'm going to come over to the color bar and show you another way to change this. If you click anywhere on this color bar with your left mouse button and you move it up and down, you'll notice that you're starting to change the color of the layers. The longer you hold the button down, the more you're going to change it. Like I'm just, I'm not even moving my mouse and I've got. 0 0.08 right here. Not that I need it, but I'm just demonstrating that you can do that. And that's one way to fine tune it. If you right click, the opposite happens. You're going back to the rough side. And again, the longer you hold it down, the more it's going to make your change. Me, personally, I like to work up in the dialog box. So I'm going to hit the reset. I'm going to hit the adaptive and I'm going to hit the smooth just once. Now the keep minimum, if I check that box, when I hit the smooth, what that does is anything that's 0.8, since that is our minimum layer height, will stay at 0.8. It's not going to try to change it to something else. I usually leave that unchecked. Let's go ahead and give this a print and see how it comes out. Over here, we have the version where we did not apply the variable layer height. You can see all the rings come down here in the front. And this one was with the uh, variable layer height turned on. And you can see how it's a little bit smoother. We still have a little bit up here. Not much at all here on this top part. You can see the difference it's making. You can use this to help out with all kinds of models. Anything from anything dome shaped like helmets, or even articulating octopus. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Be sure to smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.